Howdy Pitmasters, in this video I'm going to show you guys how to manage your fire in an offset smoker. Let's get to it. So first we've got to get our offset smoker fired up. So I have a chimney here full of hot red Ashdover charcoal briquettes which I'm going to pour straight into the firebox. Now I'm using a charcoal basket here because it allows better cleanup, allows me to keep the charcoal contained in one spot and it just makes things a little easier. So you can see here they're red hot. Then we're going to close up this side fire door and any dampers here just to allow these coals to heat up to the temperature we're looking for. So whilst our coals are heating up I've got our first wood log split here preheating inside the cooking chamber because it's catching some of that heat off those coals allowing us to preheat this slightly. Then when that firebox is really hot due to those red hot coals, I'm going to transfer this log split from here on top of the firebox to preheat because it's going to get a lot hotter in there real soon. So our firebox got really hot, our coals are up to temperature and I've had this log split sitting on top of the firebox for about 5 minutes so it's nice and preheated. So now that we're ready to go and we're up to the temperature, we're going to start to get that smoke going. So we're going to put this log split straight here on top of those hot coals and it should catch a light within the next 30 to 40 seconds. And we're going to crack our fire door open here to allow a whole heap of oxygen to flow through to give us that nice clean burn that we're after. So what you don't want is, while that log's initially trying to catch a light, what you can see behind me is that porous white smoke. That's not what we want. We don't want the food going on this smoker until we have a nice thin blue smoke rolling. And the reason for this white smoke is meaning that that log has not got enough, enough oxygen to your fire. Um, and it's smoldering. So what you want is the nice clean fire burn and once that log does get lit and you have an appropriate log to coals ratio then you should start to see very minimal thin blue smoke to almost no smoke billowing out of that exhaust. So once this log's fully lit and this white smoke dies off then we're ready to get the meat on and start preheating the next log. So just doing a quick check of our fire and you can see it's burning real nice here with a good clean burn. We shut this lid down and we can keep an eye on our fire through the firebox door here. So whilst I've got the cooking chamber door open to get the food on, it's a good opportunity to get this wood split off to avoid having to open the cooking chamber door again. And to get it on top of our firebox to get nice and hot and preheat for when we need this next wood split. Okay, so we started to get that thin blue smoke because our fire was burning really well. So we've put our ribs in, closed the lid, taken this log out of there that was preheating because now we're getting some serious heat on this firebox due to the current fire burning. So now we're going to move this log here to preheat this log, get it nice and hot, and then by the time that one start to have burned down and turned to ash, we can get this one on and it should be hot enough and preheated enough that it's just going to light up real quick and burn real strong. And um, we should get about an hour out of that log that's in there now. And what you want to do is just avoid looking and avoid opening your cooking chamber and your firebox where you, where you can avoid it. But uh, you want to be able to keep an eye on that log in there, um, make sure it's burning clean, make sure you get a nice strong fire out of it, and once it starts to, um, once it starts to, to burn down into ash and it looks like it's dying off and your fire is starting to drop, then you know it's time to put your next log on. And there comes that thin blue smoke we're talking about. We can almost cheat here without opening our firebox door and just see how well that log's burning in there. But you can also tell by the amount of that thin blue smoke we were talking about, that very, very thin smoke coming out, means we're getting a good, clean burn fire. We're sitting at our 250 Fahrenheit mark that we want for cooking these ribs. Uh, so now it's time to babysit this offset smoker and keep an eye on that fire and um, replenish our wood when we need to. So you can see here that our fire is burning really high, but our temperatures have started to go way above 250. They're starting to shoot up to around 270, 280, which means it's getting way too hot in there. So to kill off some of the oxygen to this fire, I'm going to have to close off this door and open up this just a slight bit to allow a little bit of oxygen in so we don't get that poisonous white smoke. But this should kill off that heavy flame and it should drop our temperatures down in a few minutes. See what it does. So you can see here our temperature has dropped down to 270 from about 285 and it's starting to go down even more. So now that we've closed that off uh, and we've just closed that door a little bit and left a little bit of a, a gap in there for that oxygen to still get in and let the fire breathe, we're still getting a nice thin blue smoke 
but we've killed some of the airflow getting to the fire so our temperature is starting to stabilize around that 250 mark and come back down again which is exactly what we want so we'll let that keep burning keep an eye on it and pretty soon it's going to be time to change that log over okay so whilst we're able to maintain and bring down our temperatures again to around 250 we can see it's starting to taper off and we're hitting around we dropped to 247 and we got to around 235 so that means we're needing some more oxygen to that fire so what we're going to do is head over and check where that's at and how that log's burning and if it still looks like it has some life left in it then we're going to open up that vent and that side door and let some more flames in so that log still has plenty of life to it so what that means is we're going to need to get some more oxygen in so we're going to reopen this door again open this side bit here open that door open that bit there and hopefully that shoots our temps up a little bit and we'll make sure we keep this log here to preheat now another thing we have been doing here is whilst we're preheating this log we do want to have it pretty hot all the way around so every 10 minutes or so I'm just rotating this log on here and then hopefully not only have you got the whole outside of the log pretty hot but hopefully the heat has penetrated most of the inside as well that way that thing is completely dried out it's completely heated and when it goes on it lights almost instantly so we're just giving ourselves the best chance of a clean burning fire when we get that log on okay so here our fire our log has really started to die off here you can see whilst we're lit we're actually not getting many flames from this now, which means it's pretty much starting to die. So we've got this real preheated log here that we're going to get on and get this one lit up because we're not going to get too much more flames and fire out of that one. So let's get this one burning. Now while this one's lighting up, again, you leave your door open for a few minutes until it's lit and you can see because we preheated that log, it has lit almost immediately. So now that thing's catching light, we'll just let those flames get a little higher and we'll close off this door. Okay, so that fire's going perfectly, so it's time to shut off that door and leave this vent open and let it burn. And there we go. Now, because we have such a strong burn going on that log, like you can see here, we need to keep a close eye that this top of fire, this temperature here does not just shoot right up. If it does, we're going to have to close this over, shut some of that vent to re-stabilise that temperature. So the same deal, now that we've got that second log in, we get this other one, this third log, straight on top of that firebox to preheat in turn to put on when that second one dies off. Rinse and repeat, that's how we do it. Now another trick is, sometimes it's just a case of stoking your fire. You can open vents, you can close things off, um, but sometimes this, like this log here had stopped burning, it was starting to die off and smolder. Open the firebox, give it a quick poke around, move a few things, a few coals around, and bam, off she goes. So something that will prevent you from getting burnt, like a fire poker or old barbecue tongs like this, sometimes that's all it takes. So you can see here this log's starting to burn down. We've still got some live flames coming out of it. Now when those live flames start to die down and this starts to crumble into just ash, then we know it's time to get that third log on. So our temperature's doing really good, our fire's really stable, but we want to just bring that temperature down the slightly. So with this one, all I'm gonna do is a very, very slight tweak of this firebox vent, just like that. Micro adjustments, and then you wanna give it at least five to 10 minutes to see how it works. You don't wanna keep looking back and forth and temperature's not moving, keep shuffling it, you're actually shuffling with it, messing with it. You need to give it enough time. So micro adjustments, check. Micro adjustments, check. Um, because even just that, that little adjustment I did then, should be enough to bring our temperature down by a good 10-15 degrees Fahrenheit uh, in the next 10 minutes. So, just a, a word of advice there. Okay, so temperature's starting to drop slightly. You can see here, that log's basically done. So it's time to get our third log on that is real good, well, really well preheated. So this one should light up real quick as well. Let's get these doors open, dampers open, and let it light. And there you go, that one took a little longer because it was a bigger log and our charcoal had started to drop down a little bit where we've got a bit less. But um, yeah, up to about maybe a minute and then we're off, nice and lit. And that is always another thing to consider. If you fill your charcoal bo basket up really high at the start of the cook, there's less chance that you'll need to replenish that. But I only did one chimney load and then a little bit to the side uh, and then we're using the logs 
as the smoke. So the way I do smoking on an offset is I use the charcoal for the heat and the wood for the smoke. Uh, and obviously that contributes to maintaining the heat. But eventually what you'll find is your coal bed will start to die down. Now, looking at the size of coals I have left in there right now, I'm probably not going to get another log to burn cleanly on the size of charcoal that's in there now. Now luckily, this cook will basically be done. So uh, we've actually done a pretty good ratio there. But normally what would have to happen is I would have to preheat another chimney of coals somewhere else outside of the pit and get it in before the next log went on. The reason you don't want to put new coals, especially like uh, briquettes or things that have a an ashy start and a, a, a bad scent at the start of the burn before they're lit, you don't want to put them in the side there whilst your food's in because you're going to mix the good clean smoke with that initial ashy burn off black smoke from the charcoals lighting up and you don't want that. So put them in a chimney and do it over another grill or on a concrete base or something and then chuck them in if you need to. But like I said, luckily for this cook, we won't have to. But there you go. So there you have it. That's how you maintain your fire in an offset smoker. If you found this video helpful, make sure you share, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And until next time, I'm Mark from Good Mark's Barbecue. Cheers.